Okay, so this is what happened, right, guys? So we came onto the plane. Onto the plane, we came into the airport. Ah, oh, relax now. We got into the airport and I go to check in because I'm a bronze member. So I go and I check in and he's bronze like. Bronze that's in group six. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm sorry. We're only boarding rows nine and above right now. You'll have to wait. Well, I'm in row eight. Please step aside, sir. It's just one row. Don't you think it's okay if I... We'll call your row momentarily. Step aside, sir. Because of you. Oh, there's nothing to Because we're you. sitting upstairs because of you. And the Should seat. be in premium economy now. Why are you from this You might bump me up for my injury. <laughs> On behalf of the captain and the airline, we would like to apologize for this situation, sir. We have a seat waiting for you in first class where we feel you will be much more comfortable. So let me tell you about the injury. So I go to check in and the gentleman's like, would you like to check in another, your carry-on? He's like, do you have any carry-ons? And I said, yeah, I do. He said, would you like to check it on for free? And I said, hell yeah, hon, let me go get it or whatever. So I go and get it from, I go to Anthony because he doesn't have any bikes checked in. That's a story for another time. I'm sorry, sir. You're gonna have to check. That. I got it. No, I'm sorry. That bag won't fit. We're no, no, I'm not. Hey, I'm not checking my bag. Okay. Okay. There's no need to raise your voice, sir. I'm not raising my voice. This would be raising my voice to you. Okay. I don't want to check my bag. Okay. So I'm like, do you want to check your bag in, like the one that's the most difficult to carry, kind of thing? So he's like, yeah, cool, I will. And then he goes to put his um, trimmers in it. So he puts his trimmers in it, and it can't close because it's overpacked. Anthony has a lot of like thick cotton wool wear. <laughs> Knitwear. <laughs> so everything is really bulky. Cashmere. So he tries to put it in and it just won't go in. And so I start helping him and we're like closing it together and he's like, thank you, this is great. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Anthony's like, Ugh! and I'm like, what happened? I turn around, there's blood everywhere. <laughs> all on the floor like pools of blood everywhere pools of blood on his shoes on my shoes on my suitcase and I'm like what has happened like I'm thinking like his femur has been cut or something you know like is, is it gonna bleed out or something and then he shows me his finger <laughs> deep cut the blade went right through this part of his finger and it was causing the most extra Scene. It was a crime scene in LAX airport. It was, it was crazy. Ow! God damn it! Who the fuck are you guys? looking at us you know people no coming over they asking us if we if we needed to get the paramedics it was insane and i'm like oh my god babe like calm down it's okay he's pacing up and down the stop, lying. <laughs> stop lying he's pacing up and down but what saying the, oh my gosh you, like, you know do you freeze it and panic stuff. Yeah, those things, like when, when something happens when there's something that happens it's like a dead headlight she just freezes <laughs> Flight, I fry. I'm just like, <laughs> I can't what, move. Do you do that? No. You do. I was assessing the situation. Like an ostrich. So I was looking around at the your head. <laughs> That wasn't nice. She bandaged it well. So Anthony's like, I'm gonna go and fix this, She's and I'm gonna just be a like, doctor. huh? She's thinking of a creature. Yeah, it took medicine, and I'm like, huh? So I'm standing there with the things for about 10 seconds and I'm like, this is silly. So I walk down to where I think he's going to be and I see the first aid. I look over and I see him. So I go over to him and he's pacing the floor again, pacing the floor again. 
and I see that they gave him a bandage, and I'm like, let's put it on. And he's like, no, this bandage isn't good enough. I can't do it. And you're fine. So you're fine. And I was like, they gave you something. What is it? He's oh. like, it's a gauze. It can't. He didn't even say gauze. He was like, it's a patch. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, how soon can you land? I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. No, I mean I'm just not sure. Or can't you take a guess? Well, not for another two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? No, no, no. I mean, we can't land for another two hours. Fog has closed down everything this side of the mountains. We've got to get through to Chicago. <laughs> he said they gave me a patch. <laughs> so I look at it and I see that it's a gauze. So I'm like, okay, like, I know what to do with this situation. So I'm like, let me help you out, baby. So we get it together, we bandage everything, you know, we put it in a big fluff, put it on. And then, yeah, we solve it. It's not, we've applied a lot of pressure and it seems to be holding up, so that's good. But, moral of the story, whenever Anthony and I go on holiday, he comes up with a scar. Show up your scar. Mrs. Nordberg, I think we can save your husband's arm. Where would you like it sent? Oh, oh, Fred, I'm so glad you came. Well, well that's good to see you. I came oh. as soon as I heard. Well, thank you, Frank. You bet. Where's Nordberg? Oh, he's right here, Frank. <laughs> right. Nordberg, it's me, Frank, your buddy. Who's going now? That way. That's from Santorini, and now this one, it won't scar because it's on his finger, but it'll be a little bit of a scar initially and then it will go away. But we basically need prayer and fasting whenever we travel. <laughs> um, but we'll be fine in Jesus' name. We're just waiting on the train. Train? We're just waiting on the plane for our 10 hour, 50 minute journey. Ugh, long. But it'll go fast, hopefully. It's through the night, so hopefully we'll just have a nice little sleep. But yeah, that's a great story and I'm a great storyteller. Bye.